Sabakinas. Welcome to our program in a nutshell. Today we have a guest. His name is Josh Kuiper and he's a candy maker. It's not often that we have candy makers come on as a guest. His company is called Naked Toffee and yes, I said the word naked, Naked Toffee. He was recently the recipient of a Young Entrepreneur Award from the Poconos, the Pocono region. And I'm going to ask him to explain a little bit about that for us. And just want to say welcome, Josh, to our program today. Thank you so much. So Young Entrepreneur Award from which district was that from again? Chamber of the Northern Poconos. Okay. And How does somebody get that award from the Chamber of the Northern Poconos? Uh, drive, dedication, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, you know, there's a whole lot that goes into it. And uh, one of the funnier stipulations is you have to be under 41. And I turned 41 about two weeks after I got the award. So it was like right under the wire on that one. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. So tell us about Naked Toffee. Uh, Naked Toffee is uncoated, unadulterated, unbelievably good. Uh, my toffee is pure toffee. It contains no chemicals, no preservatives, nothing unnatural. Um, uncoated in chocolate. So in the candy market, toffee specifically, uh, the majority of toffee sold is coated in chocolate and or nuts. Uh, Naked Toffee is not. It's just pure toffee and is much better this way than if you were to coat it in chocolate. Okay. And you are, your business is located in the Carbondale Industrial Park, I believe. Can you tell us a little bit about your business location and, and what you have there as far as like a, 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 a business? Yeah, so I proudly produce Naked Toffee at the CTTC, which is the Carbondale Technology Transfer Center. So not only does it give me a commercial kitchen and the equipment to make my product, but they also give me, you know, help with my business, which is great. So if I need help, I can ask the executive director, I can ask someone else that works there, and you know, if they don't know the answer, they know someone that does. So it's a really amazing resource for a startup business. So how does a young adult around how long have you been making candy now? Uh, so since 2005. Okay, so how does a young adult around 30 some years of age get involved in making candy? Well, I saw a candy cook apprenticeship advertised at a candy factory that was about a mile from my house. So uh, I put my two week notice in at my job, went and got that job. And I was a candy cook apprentice for two years. Uh, so that basically entailed uh, learning candy recipes from executive candy chefs. And uh, these guys, you know, come on in and they teach you candy recipes and show you videos about candy making and uh, answer your questions. So I got to learn how to make like caramel, taffy, toffee, brittle, nougat, fudge, like you name it. But toffee was by far the best and easiest to produce candy that required the least amount of specialized equipment to produce. Okay. I'm having visions of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Johnny Depp, <laughs> Willy Wonka, yeah, yeah. Gene Wilder and everything. So what is your day like making candy? Well, you know, I've actually had some friends in the kitchen help me and they told me it's like watching alchemy. You know, oh. you just, you just uh, take sugar and butter and combine it and let it stir and cook. You know, the magic happens. Uh, so I'll put it into a fire mixer right now. I pour it onto a stainless steel table, cut it up, uh, put it in a quarter pound packages and process it, you know, seal them up nice. Um, but other ways that I have made candy, uh, it was similar in the candy factory, but uh, what I did between a candy cook apprenticeship and doing it now is I used to hand stir seven pound batches on a stove at home. And that was grueling because you have to stir syrup for about 45 minutes. You know, it was just a, a very painful process, which I'm not going to miss because I don't hopefully never have to do that again. So the market itself though, how do you develop a market for something like toffee? Well, so one of the, one of the things that, my, that Naked Toffee aims to serve is sort of a niche. Um, the vast majority, like I said before, of toffee is sold coated in chocolate and or nuts. So the way I get into it is I just have an extremely high quality product and I don't adulterate it by adding cheaper coatings of chocolate or nuts, which to me ruins the flavor. So I've actually coated my toffee in chocolate before and it, it, it turns a 10 into like a six, in my opinion. Okay. So we're looking at the, again, the market share or the market idea. How yeah. does a, a small business like yourself break into that larger market of, you know, the major companies? And, you know, I'm assuming there's a major companies, corporations that produce toffee. So how do, as a small businessman here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, how do you break into that market? Well, I'm doing it from the ground up. So a lot of samples. Um, when I closed last June, I had eight retailers. I'm back up to six. Uh, and I mean, I'm just getting this in people's mouths any, any chance I get, because you can't tell how good this stuff is just by looking at it. You, know, you got to try it. Um, I like to go to, you know, restaurants, bars, breweries, wineries are good places to do it, uh, like boutiques, stuff like that. You know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of good places to, to sell it around here, actually. Okay, so if somebody in our viewing audience said, I'd like to uh, try Naked Toffee, where would you find it at? So Adventure Games on Main Street in Dixon City has all seven varieties. Taylor Beverage in the Price Chopper Plaza on Taylor Hill has all seven varieties. Groove Brewing has almond and coffee toffee. On and on Marketplace on Kapaus Avenue in Scranton, they have uh, almond cashew. They have uh, mocha toffee and also peanut brittle. Um, let's see my other ones. Uh, Groove Brewing on Cooper's, Cooper's Seafood House has almond toffee, cashew toffee, they have coffee toffee and peanut brittle. 
And uh, today I just added Luminosity. Um, it's a little boutique over on, what is it, Main Avenue, Old Forge, South Main Avenue, Old Forge, uh, Luminosity, sorry, I said it wrong. Uh, Luminosity Boutique, she, uh, she just opened up about two weeks ago. And one of the nice things about her business is she does donate to NAMI, which is the National Alliance for the Mentally Ill. So a portion of her proceeds do go to that as well. Uh, and she just uh, became our sixth retailer today. So it seems like the local community is opening up to selling your product and hopefully that will expand and you'll be able to continue. And how would you look at it as far as trying to make it more nationwide, like maybe East Coast oriented or something? Trade shows, things like that, do they exist? So the specialty food trade show would be a really good thing to get into in New York. And then um, I think something like that would be, uh, it'd be to get into like a major grocery store, your Wegmans, your Whole Foods, your Trader Joe's, something like that would be a springboard, but that would also be a huge commitment for someone as small as I am. So you, I know you started mentioning a bunch of names there and they're kind of tongue twisters and everything <laughs> like that. So you have seven varieties of, of naked toffee. Yes, sir. And let's go through those. Tell us a little bit about, if you can, each one, yeah. the, you know, what the product, the title of it is and the taste mm -hmm. and what it is all about. Absolutely. So almond toffee is my most popular variety. It's the most balanced variety between buttery, nutty, and sugary. And it has a uh, semi-hard consistency. This almond and the cashew have the softest consistency. And the cashew toffee is my second most popular variety. Um, it's more buttery and uh, pretty well balancing the sugary and nutty, but more buttery because of the butteriness of the cashews. Um, I have a butter toffee that's kind of like a hard candy consistency. It's best if you let that one dissolve or melt, and it's great if you sip it with a hot beverage, your hot cocoa, your coffee, your tea. It's almost like having cream and sugar in your mouth. Really excellent uh, combination on that one. Um, I have a coffee toffee, so that's like a, a cup of decaf coffee with the cream and sugar already added. And then I have a mocha toffee, which is that same variety with cacao nibs added. And that's, that's a real good one because the chocolate taste of those cacao nibs really rounds out the flavor of the coffee and just adds a really excellent dimension to it. Uh, my newest variety is a cacao bourbon toffee. Uh, that has like notes of cherry and I actually used a natural bourbon extract to give that a really amazing flavor. And the cacao nibs just, just blend into that so well. Um, and then uh, oh, and cashew toffee, butter, mocha. And I'm missing one, so what am I missing? Um, peanut brittle, how could I forget that? Okay. So my peanut brittle, it is you know, more roasted than your traditional peanut brittle and I double grind the peanuts in that to give it a really nice roasted honey nut peanut butter flavor. So as far as expansion, do you have other flavors in the back of your mind? And if I'm going to call you a candy maker, I'm assuming you have secrets, trade secrets and everything. So do you have other flavors or ideas coming out? Oh, I absolutely have a proprietary process. Okay. Um, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so my next new flavor I'm happy to tell you is going to be pistachio toffee. Um, we used to make a lot of that in the candy factory. And that one has like a roasted pistachio, almost like a buttery popcorn flavor. Really interesting taste. And I, I do have at least, you know, seven to ten other varieties, which I do plan on releasing. Um, last year, before we had shut down, we were releasing a new variety every two months and I, I plan on resuming that you know once everything gets rolling again okay let's stop talking about the toffee a little bit let's talk about Josh himself a little bit yeah yeah what's your background what got you interested in making candy I mean was it a, a particular course in high school or college or family interest or I've always loved to cook, like literally since the day I was old enough to touch the stove, I said to my mother, teach me how to do that. So as soon as I was old enough to cook, I was cooking. And I've, I've literally cooked almost every single day for about the last 30 years. Um, but as far as candy making, I had zero experience when I walked into that candy factory. I mean, I walked in off the street and was just like, hey, I'm your guy, and they hired me. That's pretty much all there was to it, you know? Okay. But, um, you know, I, I just really enjoy cooking and I really enjoy taking it to just another level. So when I cook something, I like to, you know, start with the recipe or start with something basic and then just every time I make it, just refine it and improve the way I'm doing it and just make it better every time I make it. So the ingredients, where do you get your ingredients from? Uh, Restaurant Depot in Wilkes-Barre, Wegmans, you know, just, just grocery stores and wholesale stores and stuff like that. Um, I'm not buying a large enough quantity to really get like a major wholesale discount other than going to, you know, say Restaurant Depot. Mm -hmm. So then as far as the overall expansion of the market and everything, I mean, where do you see yourself, say, in five years from now with, with Naked Toffee? Well, I'm, I'm hoping to have sustainable growth. I don't want to, you know, explode all at once and not be able to take care of people. So I'm or not be able to take care of my customers. So I'm hoping to, you know, just, just grow incrementally and just, you know, continue adding retailers. Um, the three ways that I sell it are person to person, whether it's to myself, to another person or at a show. So um, I have a couple of shows booked coming up. We can talk about that in a bit. Um, I do sell at nakedtoffee.org. That's my website, which is informational. It's also an online store. And then uh, obviously the retailers that we already talked about. So as far as actually if someone was interested, one of our viewers was interested in purchasing, it'd probably just go into nakedtoffee.org? You could, yeah, absolutely. Would, would be an easy way to reach out mm -hmm. or go to some of the different businesses locally that you said that's, that are selling your product yep. currently right now. Yep, and all my retailers are listed right on the website. Okay. 
So I'm looking at your display there, the packaging and everything, and can you tell us a little bit about the packaging overall and then just your, your way of displaying this in, in businesses? Absolutely. So those are quarter pound packages. Um, I used a nice thick five mil plastic on that to give it you know, impermeability and to you know, keep the product fresh as long as possible. Um, because toffee's kind of like a dried up sponge, like consistency wise, not like the way you eat or anything, but like, like molecular, it's like a dried case. So it'll absorb moisture if you let it. So I put a desiccant in there. You know, it's heat sealed. It's got a tamper proof seal on there and a resealable package, you know, cause there's four servings in each package. Um, you know, some people just want to eat the whole bag all at once. I'm always telling people just eat a bite here and there, have it with your coffee and we're eat a little bit. And then there's other people that have said to me, I can't buy a bag of it because I'm just gonna eat the whole thing. So it's almost too good for some people. Um, but it has the nutrition information on there, you know, the logo, website, all that good stuff. You know, so all the uh, required stuff, I put my lot number on their expiration date. So I get uh, a four month expiration date on all the products except for peanut brittle. Peanut brittle is good for six months. And in contrast to the candy that you would buy on a shelf, you know, the stuff you get on a shelf might've been sitting in that package for a year or two, but because it's more shelf stable due to the, due to the adding of, you know, preservatives and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I'll never do that with my product just because it wouldn't be naked toffee than if I'm adding chemicals to it. So I'm a viewer, I'm watching this, what's gonna persuade me to wanna to try toffee as opposed to I wanna get some other chocolate candy or something else? I mean, realizing you just said the ingredients and, and being a small business and everything, but what's your selling point? What's your marketing to your average person to say, I wanna try this and I wanna continue trying it? Well, like I said, first and foremost is getting those samples in at any opportunity that I can. Um, my target markets, you know, is uh, the kid adults, people who've had this stuff as children. It reminds them of, you know, being a kid again. It's like, hey, it's like my mother used to make, my grandma used to make, you know, that's absolutely good. Um, you know, greedy consumers, people that just want to eat candy and just love it for the sugary taste, you know, just those sweet tooth people absolutely love to get to them. Um, pretty much I, the 45 to 64 demographic consumes the most candy, they say. Okay. Um, so that's definitely on there. Um, you know, your, your beer drinkers, your wine drinkers, you know, your coffee, tea drinkers, because it just pairs so well with all those things. And I often do tell people how well it pairs with things. You know, so it's because this stuff is like half butter, it really just opens up and picks up the flavor of whatever you pair it with. You know, so there's, there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, play with this stuff. And then there's also other things you could do with it besides just eating it. You know, so um, you could use it as a salad topping, like it's candied walnuts type, like in, in place of those. Um, you could uh, grind this up in a Cuisinart with a graham cracker to make a pie crust. Uh, we did that for Easter a couple of years ago, put a no-baked cheesecake in there. So good. Um, you could put that in your yogurt. You know, like I've seen, you could have that with any, any hot beverage goes well with. You know, so there's really a whole bunch of things that you could do with this besides just eating it. So as far as marketing it, besides just seeing it as a candy, what you just described, because I mean, I wouldn't have thought of that of putting it on top of a salad because it sounds like a really tasty <laughs> treat. So if I wanted a couple more ideas, is that on your website or how, how do people find out about other recipes that they could use toffee for? Well, I mean, hey, let your creativity run wild. Anything that you think of is good with this. I mean, like, because it's caramelized butter, caramelized sugar, it just goes well with so many things. And I am always open to new ways to, you know, use this stuff. You know, anyone that comes to me and says, hey, I did it this way, it's great, you know? So it's, it's always nice to hear that stuff. So for people who are wanting to take a little walk into the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory candy, the Naked Toffee <laughs> yeah, candy yeah. factory that you have and everything, what's your typical day like as far as just getting the product ready and getting it from raw product to finished product? Well, so cook days sometimes start at 5, 5.30 in the morning because I oftentimes have to shop right before cooking. Um, I like to do that because I want my products, to, my raw materials to be as fresh as possible. You know, I don't want anything that's been sitting around or sitting in my fridge or anything like that. So I'll often buy, you know, my butter for my toffee the day of, you know, and just, just get up at 5 in the morning, go down and get it, and then go cook the stuff. You know, I keep my butter under refrigeration at all times just because, you know, it's a temperature-controlled substance. For safety, you got to have it. Um, but, um, so yeah, like everything, everything is... Uh, pretty fresh with that, you know? So your day, you spend X amount of hours per day manufacturing the candy, then I, I'm assuming you're marketing it, you're making your phone calls, you're yeah, uh, networking, uh, you know, via the internet and everything like that? Yeah, I'm doing everything right now. You know, but um, I mean, uh, I have a couple of volunteers that help me, which is very, very useful, because in the kitchen, you have to have a couple other people. You know, and there, there are some videos of the candy being made on Naked Toffee's Facebook page. Okay. You, know, you scroll down and you can see the mixer spinning and us pouring the stuff on the table, and it just looks so good. It looks, the stuff looks delicious, even though I am biased, of course. Okay. <laughs> so what do you do in your free time? What does Josh do in his free time when he's not making candy, marketing candy, and pretty much eating and breathing candy, <laughs> make a well, toffee candy. Love to cook, so tomorrow I'll be serving a dinner for about six people at, at mom's house, that'll be a good time. You know, take care of my grandparents, I like to practice Tai Chi, um, you know, uh, all that good stuff.
Okay. So again, I keep using those examples of Willy Wonka and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, yeah. What do you think of those two movies in relation to the candy making business? Well, it, it's a movie, so obviously right. it's your romanticized version. But I mean, it's 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 pretty cool, you know. Uh, people people used to call my my empl employee that I had last year. They call him uh, Slugworth, you know. So we always <laughs> laugh about that. So so it's definitely permeated the culture, you know. So people definitely compared me to that, and people are calling me Willie sometimes and <laughs> stuff like that. It's just like, yeah, you know, go with it. So as far as like, do you see a spike during certain seasons of of the candy? I mean, realizing we had a pandemic and still is affecting what society has become, but. What is the season or off season or the the positive seasons or the big selling seasons? Well, definitely November, December, huge, obviously with your Christmas. Uh, January and February are the exact opposite of huge. And I think that's because, you know, people are in like November and December, they're eating everything and they gain 10 pounds. And then January rolls around, it's like, I'm not eating that stuff. Right. You know, it's like, ah, no, 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 I, got, I can't do it, you know. And then, uh, you know, the Lenten season is kind of tough because a lot of times people are like, oh, I gave up candy, I gave up sweets, I gave up sugar, I gave up, you know, indulgences, which is understandable. But I mean, obviously, Obviously, Easter is a pretty decent time for it, even though we haven't, you know, gotten into that market yet. Just because, like I said, we just reopened on March 1st, so we didn't have a, a lot of build-up time to Easter. Okay, so again, you're a young adult who has become working on becoming very successful in making a product, distributing it, selling it, and everything. What words do you have to people out there who may be watching this and saying, like, you know what, I'd like to take that risk and be a candy maker, be whatever that means, an entrepreneur? What, what words of advice would you give since you've already won an award <laughs> for your entrepreneurialship as a young adult? Well, I'd start it off with a saying, even the greatest journey begins with just a small step. So when you begin something like this, and I think this applies to any business, um, you look at it and you look at the scope of what you're doing and you're like, wow, how am I going to accomplish all this? And, and the best way to do it is just take small steps forward, you know, keep moving forward, break it down into small manageable goals and then just keep working at it, you know? Um, you just, you have to have the drive to follow through on this stuff. And uh, another big part of it is realize that there's help out there. So um, the uh, CTTC helped me up, helped me out by hooking me up with the uh, Small Business Development Center. And they have those in colleges across the country. So they're, they're a great resource as well because they have a lot of answers to the questions that you're inevitably going to have as a business person. And that applies to just about any business. You know, so don't get too overwhelmed when you look at the whole thing as a whole and just, just break it up into manageable pieces. So you mentioned college. Um, what kind of an educational background do you think you need to be successful in this field or something like that entrepreneurship field? Sales definitely helps. Food service background helps. You know, that stuff's very good. Um, you know, it just, it really, um, it definitely helps you to, you know, have a lot of drive and motivation. And one of the funny things is before you get into business, there's a lot of things that you don't think about. You know, there's a lot of things where it's just like, oh, I didn't realize that until I went to do it, you know. And it, it, can be, it can be overwhelming, but there, there definitely is help out there. You know, um, as, far as, as far as schooling, I mean, my schooling was my candy cook apprenticeship. So I didn't really go to school for this or anything like that, but uh, it was like about two years of, of intensive learning or intensive training. So you mentioned that there's trade shows out there. What, describe a, a trade show to somebody who hasn't attended one, what it's like as far as taking your product out there and competing with all these other brands that are there trying to get that market, trying to get that attention from the industry. Well, I'm actually someone who's never attended one because, like I said, I okay. really just got into my own business okay. again in uh, August of 19 is when we first opened. Okay. Um, but my dad's fiance, she's telling me that I need to go to the, you know, the it's the SFA, the Specialty Foods Show, or and up in New York. She said you have to go to that. And what she told me is that what you do is you um you get to try a lot of different products. Like there's samples everywhere you go, you know, so you get to try all these products, you get to do all that sort of thing, and um, you get to meet a lot of people that can once again help you with your business and give you the resources and outlets for your product. So that's something I'm looking forward to doing. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to get to it this year, but I'm hoping that in you know, 2022 to get to that show. Um, and I'm hoping one day to, to get up, because they have tiers apparently. So like a, a tier one member, this is just, this is just not, maybe not exact, but it's, it's right. paraphrasing. But like a tier one member, like you're allowed to go to the show and like you're a member and stuff, but you have to I think it's a tier two member. And there's certain things that you have to accomplish to actually be an exhibitor at these shows. So I'm, I'm hoping to work up to that, because I think it would be a really, really excellent outlet for Naked Toffee. It sounds like, you again, you're receiving some positive feedback or positive reception from your business locally with, you know, the, the various businesses taking on your product and willing to sell it and everything. If you just had to summarize it, how would you feel Northeastern PA is to... Uh, startup businesses, in, in particular to make a topic? Well, I mean, we have a business community. I'm, I'm really starting to learn that, you know, business owners help each other out, you know, because we all understand where each other's been. 
or where it is going and needs to go, and we can, we can all help each other. And it's just it's just nice to see somebody else, you know, joining the group, or it's nice to see someone else, you know, hey, you're a business owner too. Hey, so am I. And it, it's it's a common ground, you know. It's almost like even if your businesses are completely different, you you still have that common ground of you're an entrepreneur. You know, it's, it's a hard thing to do, and I think we all realize that. So, would you encourage young adults to? try and start your own business or would you encourage them to spend a little time maybe learning that particular business and then getting into it or feet first, dive right in? What's your thoughts? Uh, how did you approach it and what's your thoughts? I've always been an incremental guy. So, I mean, like I said, I began my apprenticeship in 2005. Uh, starting in about 2008 was when I started making it in my own kitchen. So that was when I would buy Christmas presents for like, you know, 30, 40, 50 people. And my friends said, you have all these candy recipes. Why don't you just, you know, make candy for people? You know, but the thing for me is I've always been a, you know, a slow and steady. I'm, I'm the tortoise in the race. You know, I'm not the hare. I'm not trying to like get there as quick as possible. It's like, no, I like to build a strong foundation and get the knowledge, get the learning learning and, you know, put in your time and then take your opportunity. Um, and it, as far as encouraging others, I would definitely say, you know, do your homework, learn, research, you know, get all the information that you possibly can, because that's going to make your journey a lot easier. Because the more information you have, the, the less of a shock it's going to be when you actually start your business. Because like I said, there's a bunch of things that you just don't realize until you start doing it. So I'm looking at the product and I'm saying this is the display and everything. So I'm somebody watching the show right now and I'd say, I really want to order a special gift basket of Naked Toffee mm -hmm. for you know, a family member or something like that. Is that something that your business can do? Make up gift baskets, make up uh, tins or, or whatever that means. Explain that to me if that's something you Yeah, can. yeah. So for Christmas 2019, we did gift tins. You know, so they were uh, about this size. I'd put either either a pound of toffee or a pound and a half in there, um, and they were like a candy cane stripe, or they had like Christmas writing on them, or they had like the the flannel, the plaid type of design, and they were pretty. You know, we did pretty well on those. Um, and actually, on my website, I do sell naked pound, naked dozen, naked six pack, and a naked case. So there's there are bulk options on there as well. Okay, which is dangerous for some people apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so. So we have a situation in which somebody comes up to you and says, I want to be a candy maker. Would you tell them to do it? It's a, it's a specialized field. You know, you know, the funny thing about candy cooking is I didn't even know it existed before I went and got the job. Like, I had never heard of a candy cook. I didn't know that was a thing. And um, I actually had a friend say to me, he's like, so what do you do? You just take a bunch of stuff and throw it together and see what you get? I'm like, no, there's very specific recipes and procedures that you have to follow. You know, but as far as telling somebody to do it, I mean, hey, if you can have access to that training and you actually have a passion for it, absolutely do it. I mean, there's a million different kinds of candy you can be making. They really are, you know. So it's if you if you have candy recipes and you think it's that good and you want to stand behind your product and uh, have a high risk, high reward type of thing, go to it. So family encouragement to get involved in something like this. Um, any secret family recipes that they said, oh, you should add a certain ingredient. <laughs> and again, not realize, not saying it's specifically for the naked toffee, but something through the family histories or anything that kind of gave you that extra push. Yeah, my family taught me that there's always a secret to everything. You know, like I said, I grew up cooking with grandma, with mom, with dad, with anyone that would cook with me in the family. So they all had their little tricks, you know. But um, I've always been fortunate because cooking has been kind of common sense to me. So I've, I've been lucky enough to not really have to think about it too much and just be able to just do it with a pretty decent result most times. You know, and, and there, there really are little tricks to make everything better. So as, a, as an example, cooking with my grandmother, you know, she'll teach you 90%, 95% of the recipe, but that last little 5% is what makes it exceptional. You know, you got, you got to watch her. You got to keep an eye on her and say, oh, what was that? I saw you put something in there you didn't tell me. You, know, you, got, you got to watch her. So, so there really are little tricks to everything. Kind of following along with that, I'm just seeing that there's a lot of culinary programs that are out there. There's a lot of cooking shows on, the, on all the networks and TV stations and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of successful cooks with their cookbooks and their their webcast podcasts and everything. Um, how do you feel about the industry overall as far as are we seeing this expansion of cooking in general? Is that a good thing? Is it good for a lot more people to get involved in the cooking process or do you think maybe we've gone a little too far that there's just too much out there? Well, I think that the more people you have doing any one thing, then the better you have to be at it to distinguish yourself. So I think you know healthy competition in any market is good because that really causes pe or forces people to have to elevate what they're doing. Okay. You know, so that, absolutely. As far as cooking schools, anything, any in background for yourself? Did you ever attend like a culinary program, maybe in high school or anything at all? No, I've been in restaurants since about 1994, okay. but uh, never really went to school or anything. Okay, so basically it was through the family and just your own desire to want to become successful yep. in making candy. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, now here comes the fun part for me with the show. You have seven varieties. Yeah. Uh, you brought us a couple samples. So I'm going to attempt to sample one of these right now and see what kind of reaction I'm going to get here because I am looking forward to this based on everything that you have told me about your candy product. Which one are you going with? Uh, I'm actually not sure what it is. So it is... Uh, now I have to read it. Eyes check. Okay, I am going with... Coffee. Coffee toffee, which I'm actually a coffee fan, so I'm kind of looking forward to coffee. Nice. So I kind of chose wisely. Yeah, very heavy coffee flavor in that one. Now, the reason I did that decaf is because people aren't having toffee before like 10, 11 in the morning, and people aren't having caffeine after 3 in the afternoon. This is fantastic. Thank you. The buttery taste and the coffee taste that I'm experiencing is, is just fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down and save it for a little bit later. <laughs> but what I would do is I would, I'm going to encourage my viewers to give it a try, to give your sample a try and kind of find out a little bit more about what toffee is all about because, as you said, this is an alternative to the products that are out there that have so much chemicals added, preservatives and things like that. So I want to thank you, Josh, for being a guest today with us. Your product, Naked Toffee, delicious. Looking forward to sampling more of it once the cameras are off. <laughs> and I just want to thank you again for coming out and supporting Northeastern Pennsylvania with your business. And hopefully uh, you'll continue to grow and be a successful entrepreneur and you start off on one of my TV shows, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, and thank you, NEPA. I'm Bob Savakinas, enjoying my toffee, looking at it, and can't wait to get some more of it in a nutshell.